Welcome to our exploration of the top creepy places in Ohio, where history and mystery intertwine to create spine-chilling tales that linger in the shadows. Ohio boasts a wealth of unsettling locations that beckon the curious and brave. Join us as we delve into the dark corners of the Buckeye State, where legends come to life and the whispers of the past echo through time. Number 5. Majestic Theater Chillicothe proudly houses the Majestic Theater, a historic venue with a continuous legacy spanning 158 years. Initially established as the Masonic Hall in 1853, this sturdy brick structure served as a versatile space, accommodating various events including lodge meetings, dances, and theatrical performances. Over time, it evolved into the esteemed Masonic Opera House following extensive renovations in 1876. Under the ownership of A.R. Wolf in 1904, significant upgrades were made to the theater, including the expansion of the stage. In 1914, ownership transitioned to the Myers Brothers, who rebranded it as the Majestic Theater, shifting its focus exclusively to motion pictures, while still occasionally hosting live theater productions. The Majestic Theater's eerie reputation is fueled by its dark past, notably during the Spanish flu epidemic of 1918, Acting as a temporary morgue during the outbreak that ravaged nearby Camp Sherman, the theater's dressing rooms beneath the stage became a chilling holding area for bodies awaiting embalming. Shockingly, some individuals initially thought to be deceased were later discovered to be alive, requiring urgent transfer to a nearby hospital. After the corpses were brought onto the stage for embalming, their blood and other bodily fluids were drained into Masonic Alley, located next to the theater which earned the macabre moniker Bloody Alley thereafter. Within the dim confines of the majestic theater, spectral apparitions drift through its haunted corridors, chilling the bravest of souls. Reports speak of a ghostly girl haunting the dressing rooms, drawn to the star dressing room by the backstage stairway. Another eerie sight is the ghost of a man floating above the ground, where the stage once stood. Mysterious fogs enshroud the building, while unexplained screams pierce the air. Some claim to have seen a ghastly corpse upon the stage itself. Actors recount unsettling experiences, such as seeing phantom figures peering from the vacant backstage control booth window. Despite its haunted reputation, the Majestic Theater embraces its spectral heritage. The haunted Majestic Ghost Hunt event once allowed daring individuals to confront its paranormal mysteries. The theater remains a vibrant hub of entertainment, hosting a variety of events and performances, from civic presentations to weddings and concerts. Yet the whispers of the past continue to linger, a reminder of the enduring power of the Majestic Theater's haunted legacy. With its rich history and commitment to serving the community, diversity truly is the Majestic Theater's specialty, ensuring its enduring place as a beloved cultural landmark in Chillicothe. Number 4. Franklin Castle the Hannes Tiedemann House, also known as Franklin Castle, stands tall on Franklin Boulevard in Cleveland, Ohio. Built between 1881 and 1883 by German immigrant Hannes Tiedemann, he earned his fortune as a wholesale grocer and then as the co-founder of Union Banking and Savings. The mansion was intended as a home for his family, as well as accommodating other German immigrants. Proudly named Franklin Castle by Tiedemann, the house stood as a testament to his aspirations. Initially, happiness filled the 20-room house as Hannes, his wife Louise, their children August and Emma, and Hannes's mother, Vibeka, lived together. Tragedy struck in 1891 when 15-year-old Emma succumbed to diabetes. Shortly after, Vibeka passed away. Rumors of a curse swirled as three more Tiedemann children were buried in the following years, with the youngest being just an infant. Speculation arose. Did Tiedemann harbor secrets within the walls of Franklin Castle? Hannes Tiedemann, seeking to lift his wife Louise's spirits, constructed a grand ballroom on the fourth floor of Franklin Castle. Adorned with towers and gargoyles, the mansion took on the appearance of a castle. During this period, Hannes also began constructing secret halls and tunnels within the house. Though the purpose of these passages remains unclear, legend suggests Louise may have used them to evade her husband's temper. Following Louise's death in 1895 at the age of 57, further peculiarities emerged. 
allegations surfaced of Hannes engaging in extramarital affairs, some purportedly occurring within the confines of the mansion itself. Shockingly, he was accused of coercing women into unwanted encounters and even committing murder. Hannes Tiedemann's association with Franklin Castle came to an end following Luisa's death, as he sold the house to the Mulhauser family. Hannes passed away in 1908 from a massive stroke while strolling in the park, outliving his entire family, including his grandchildren. The Mulhauser family sold the property to the German Socialist Party in 1913. Intended as a venue for meetings and parties, Franklin Castle instead became a haven for Nazis, where legend claims 20 individuals were gunned down during political disputes. Subsequent residents reported hearing echoes of the violence replaying over and over within the house. Left vacant for a time, the property was purchased in 1968 by James Romano and his family. Despite his wife's desire to transform it into a restaurant, the presence of ghosts thwarted their plans. While the Romanos undertook the restoration of Franklin Castle, the children mentioned they wanted to share their treats with a sorrowful girl they encountered upstairs. Mrs. Romano accompanied them, only to find no one there. The children insisted they frequently played with other children upstairs, not just the crying girl. The notion of ghostly children unsettled Mrs. Romano, as did the organ music that permeated the house, despite the absence of an organ. Additionally, inexplicable footsteps, tinkling glasses, and swaying ceiling lamps prompted the family to seek assistance from paranormal investigators. During one investigation, a terrified investigator fled the house, and a priest was summoned to perform an exorcism. The priest concluded that malevolent spirits inhabited the house and advised the family to leave, as they were too potent to expel. Consequently, the Romanos vacated the premises in 1974. Sam Muscatello purchased Franklin Castle with the intention of converting it into a church, but the lingering ghost stories hindered his plans. Instead, he transformed the mansion into a tourist attraction, offering guided tours and overnight stays for the daring. Capitalizing on the tales of hauntings, he sought to profit from the macabre reputation of the house. Intrigued by the hidden passageways and tunnels, Muscatello embarked on an exploration of the property, leading to a chilling discovery of human bones in a concealed chamber. Subsequent owners encountered the lingering tales of strange phenomena recorded in the guest book, prompting further investigation into Hannes Tiedemann's misdeeds. Reports surfaced of a spectral figure, a woman in black, sighted in the tower room, believed to be the ghost of Rachel, a maid who met a grisly fate for rejecting Tiedemann's advances, allegedly strangled by him. Visitors to the tower room often experienced sensations of choking, purportedly echoing Rachel's demise. Witnesses who spent the night claimed to hear the sounds of a woman struggling to breathe, only to find the room empty upon investigation. Another spirit said to roam the halls is that of Karen, Tiedemann's 13-year-old niece, allegedly hanged in a tunnel behind the ballroom due to insanity. Tiedemann claimed mercy as his motive, but rumors suggest a darker suspicion. Karen was discovered in a compromising position with one of Tiedemann's grandsons. Additionally, a secret chamber yielded the grim discovery of 12 infant corpses. Speculation surrounds a doctor who briefly resided in the house after Tiedemann, rumored to have conducted sinister experiments on the deceased infants. Eerie cries resembling baby's wails are frequently reported echoing throughout the house, adding to its ominous reputation. Michelle Heimberger envisioned restoring Franklin Castle to its former glory, but her plans were ended by a devastating fire in November 1999, just months after she acquired the property. The blaze left significant damage, and Heimberger lacked the resources to undertake restoration efforts. Subsequently, the house sat untouched until 2006, arousing suspicion among locals. Shockingly, it was revealed that the abandoned Franklin Castle had been repurposed as a location for shooting adult films. Following this revelation, the mansion again remained vacant, its boarded-up windows and imposing fence adorned with no-entry signs contributed to its eerie and desolate appearance. Franklin Castle, a historic landmark on Franklin Boulevard, announced single-night accommodations were available for guests on December 24, 2022. As the night descends upon Franklin Castle, its ancient stones reverberate with whispers of the past. Within its haunted halls, paranormal activity stirs, and the spirits of the departed roam freely. Those who dare to stay the night may find themselves trapped in a realm where reality blurs with the supernatural.
Number 3. Sedamsville Rectory. The Sedamsville Rectory, steeped in a dark and intriguing history, has garnered a reputation for rumored demonic haunting. As one of four buildings once inhabited by priests serving the community, this over 120-year-old structure is listed on the National Historic Register and is currently undergoing restoration by its owners, the Midwest Preservation Society. The rectory boasts over 6,000 square feet of space spread across four levels. The first floor features a parlor, living room, library, formal dining room, kitchen, and bathroom, with a servant's staircase leading to the second floor, where the servants' quarters are located. The troubled history of the Sedamsville Rectory includes the tragic death of Father Donald McLeod, who was struck by a train in the late 1800s while on his way to provide comfort to a seriously ill woman. Reports suggest that Father McLeod's ghost now haunts the rectory, with numerous sightings claimed by visitors. Additionally, rumors circulate about a priest who allegedly had violated children while residing in the rectory, as well as tales of a dogfighting ring operating in the basement during a period of vacancy in the 1980s. In the eerie Sedamsville rectory, whispers of the paranormal intertwine with the creaking of ancient floorboards. Visitors shudder as they recount sightings of a spectral figure, of a man dressed in a dark clergy robe silently gliding between the living room and parlor, while ominous shadows dance beneath the pantry door. Doors groan open and slam shut of their own accord, leaving witnesses frozen in fear. Unexplained scratches mar the walls, and the keys of the parlor piano strike eerie chords without human touch. Up in the attic, the air reverberates with the laughter of unseen children, their playful chatter sending shivers down the spine. In the rocking chair room, a suitcase and chair sway ominously, manipulated by forces beyond comprehension. Meanwhile, in the master bedroom, an unseen presence leaves chilling indentations on the bed, mimicking the body shape of a restless soul. Visitors and volunteers alike are overwhelmed by a sense of unease and dread, as though the very air itself carries the weight of unseen eyes watching their every move. From the depths of the basement, the ghostly howls of phantom hounds pierce the silence, adding yet another layer of mystery to the already haunted rectory. Despite these chilling accounts, the current owners remain committed to restoring and preserving this historic landmark. Number 2. Ridges Asylum, Athens. In Athens, Ohio, stands the former Athens Lunatic Asylum, erected in 1868. Its initial patient, a 14-year-old girl with epilepsy, was admitted by parents who believed she was possessed. From 1874 to 1993, it housed individuals with various mental illnesses, including Civil War veterans, troubled youths, homeless, elderly, and even violent offenders. Additionally, it cared for tuberculosis patients in seven cottages spread across its vast 4,000-acre expanse. Over time, the asylum expanded, eventually comprising 78 buildings. Despite having resources like cattle, greenhouses, and wells, it was not self-sufficient. Three cemeteries within the premises stand as reminders of its history. The Kirkbride Method, advocated by Dr. Thomas Kirkbride, emphasized rest, cleanliness, and regularity for mental patients. Men and women were segregated, with separate living quarters and dining halls. While the main building could accommodate up to 572 patients, it often exceeded this number, reaching over 2,000 at its peak. This overcrowding strained the facility, which relied on a largely unskilled workforce from the surrounding area. Procedures like lobotomies posed significant risks, with a wrong procedure leading to death or permanent disability. Hydrotherapy, involving extreme cold or hot baths, and electroshock therapy, inducing convulsions, were also administered, sometimes resulting in severe injuries. During the era of the asylum, a wide range of conditions were considered grounds for admission, as outlined in an extensive list used as a manual for admissions. Surprisingly, conditions such as menopause, menstruation issues, alcohol abuse, epilepsy, and even asthma were deemed illnesses warranting treatment within asylum walls. However, perhaps the most astonishing reason for admission was acts of self-pleasure. This practice, along with other conditions, led to the admission of countless individuals, resulting in the severance of all contact with family members, as advocated by the Kirkbride method. This isolation extended even in death, with 700 women and 959 men buried on the asylum premises, each marked only by a number on their headstone. 
the asylum cemeteries serve as poignant reminder of its dark history. A total of 1,930 individuals were laid to rest within their grounds. While some were claimed by family members for burial elsewhere, many were left in the care of the asylum due to the stigma surrounding mental illness. Notably, over 80 Civil War veterans also found their final resting place here. The Athens Lunatic Asylum made headlines twice, both times under tragic circumstances. In 1977, the admission of Billy Milligan, a multiple personality SA offender, sparked public outcry. Milligan, who later committed several felonies including armed robbery and SA of three Ohio State University students, claimed his alternate personalities were responsible for the crimes. The sensational nature of the case captured national attention. A year later, on December 1, 1978, the asylum once again made headlines when patient Margaret Schilling vanished from her department. Despite extensive searches, her whereabouts remained unknown for 42 days until a caretaker made a grim discovery on the top floor of Building 20, Margaret's decomposing corpse. She was found naked, with her arms crossed over her chest, having neatly folded her clothes and placed them on a chair before her demise. The circumstances surrounding Margaret's death remain shrouded in mystery. Although the pathologist determined she died of natural causes, namely cardiac arrest, questions linger about the events leading up to her passing. The impression her body left on the concrete floor, a result of decomposition and sunlight filtering through the windows, remains indelible to this day, serving as a haunting reminder of the asylum's troubled history. Numerous reports suggest that both the former asylum and its surrounding cemeteries are haunted with some attributing the eerie atmosphere to the area's history as an Indian burial ground. With several buildings still vacant, speculation abounds regarding the spirits that may linger within. One such building, now known as Lynn Hall, houses various offices and the Kennedy Museum of Art. Visitors have reported encountering strange figures roaming its old floors and hearing disembodied voices, footsteps, and screams. The basement in particular evokes a sense of dread with rumors of severely disabled patients being kept in chains in its dungeon-like confines. Some claim to have heard the sound of chains being pulled, adding to the chilling ambiance. Although there is no evidence to support the claims of patients being chained to the walls, the arches in the basement contribute to its ominous appearance. The ghost of Margaret Schilling is said to manifest by looking out of the window where her body was found, as well as on other floors. Doors mysteriously open and close, and footsteps are heard when no one else is present. Visitors also report sensing the presence of others and frequently glimpse shadowy figures. A recurring apparition of a man wearing a long black coat has been known to unsettle students in the men's room for years. The cemeteries surrounding the asylum endured vandalism during its period of abandonment, fostering an atmosphere rife with reports of shadowy figures and mysterious lights. Wilson Hall, situated on the West Green where the Indian burial grounds once lay, stands as one of the most haunted dormitories on campus. Wilson Hall is notorious for its spectral activity, particularly on the fourth floor. Apparitions, voices, and inexplicable door slamming incidents are commonplace. Similarly, the Convocation Center, affectionately known as the Convo, also situated on the West Green, harbors its share of supernatural phenomena, particularly within its dormitory quarters. Legend has it that a resident assistant met a tragic end at the hands of her boyfriend within its confines, her restless spirit now said to wander the corridors. Another student, who passed away peacefully in his sleep, is believed to comfort sleeping students with spectral embraces. On the East Green looms Washington Hall, purportedly haunted by the lingering spirits of a high school girls basketball team tragically killed in a bus accident while visiting the university. Students report hearing phantom sounds of running feet and bouncing basketballs echoing through its empty halls, a haunting reminder of the tragedy that befell them. Today, the Athens Lunatic Asylum, now known as The Ridges, operates as a campus with limited access to visitors. While tours, such as the asylum tour provided by the Athens County Historical Society and Museum, offer insights into its history, exploring the vacant buildings independently is prohibited. For those seeking to experience the rumored hauntings firsthand, enrolling in classes at the university presents the opportunity to immerse oneself in the campus's rich and eerie past. Number 1. Ohio State Reformatory 
Mansfield Prison, has garnered a reputation as one of the most haunted prisons in the United States, with numerous tales of strange occurrences attributed to restless spirits of former inmates and guards. The prison's walls bear witness to a history marked by cruelty and suffering, leaving behind a legacy of paranormal disturbances. Designed in 1886 by architect Levi T. Scott, the prison drew inspiration from German castles, aiming to provide a spiritually uplifting environment for inmates. Initially intended to house young males serving their first offenses, the prison welcomed its first 150 inmates in September 1896, though it was not fully completed until 1919. At that time, it boasted the largest self-supporting steel cell block in the world, containing a total of 600 cells stacked six stories high. Despite its original mission of reform, Mansfield Prison soon became overcrowded, with cells designed for one inmate now accommodating three. As the demand for prison space grew, hardened criminals were also incarcerated, shifting the focus from rehabilitation to punishment. Brutal forms of punishment, including water hoses, a sweat box for non-white inmates, electro-torture referred to as the butterfly, and solitary confinement in the hole, characterized life within the prison walls. The harsh conditions, coupled with extreme violence from both inmates and staff, led many prisoners to suffer from insanity, self-harm, or succumb to infectious diseases amid poor sanitation and rat infestations. In 1978, the Council for Human Dignity filed a lawsuit citing the brutal and inhumane conditions within the prison. Subsequently, a federal court ordered the closure of the facility by 1986. Though construction delays with the new Mansfield Correctional Institute led to its closure being extended to 1990. In 1995, the Mansfield Reformatory Preservation Society, MRPS, was established with the mission of restoring the prison to its former grandeur. Today the prison houses a museum and offers regular tours of the property, drawing visitors from far and wide. Its popularity as a filming location, particularly for movies like The Shawshank Redemption, has further cemented its place in cinematic history. However, as tours of the prison became more commonplace, rumors of hauntings began to circulate, with tales of former inmates and deceased guards haunting the halls for eternity. Reports of strange phenomena became so frequent that MRPS began offering regular ghost tours, attracting paranormal investigators from around the globe. Throughout Mansfield Prison, numerous hotspots are teeming with paranormal activity, each with its own eerie tales. The Infirmary. Throughout its grim history, the prison infirmary bore witness to the demise of countless inmates. Some met their end due to illness or disease, while others fell prey to injuries sustained during brutal torture sessions or violent altercations. Shockingly, reports indicate that medical neglect ran rampant within its walls, with patients often left to suffer without care for days on end. Many, too feeble to defend themselves, wasted away from hunger as theft of food went unchecked. Unsurprisingly, the infirmary remains a hive of paranormal activity, with frequent sightings of unexplained gusts of wind and eerie moans that seem to emanate from nowhere. The prison's basement harbors a particularly eerie presence. A 14-year-old boy allegedly beaten to death within its confines. His specter is said to linger in the shadows, alongside reports of a sinister guard whose unsettling aura hints at a malevolent presence. These unsettling encounters contribute to the basement's reputation as a haunt of Mansfield Prison. Nestled within the prison's basement, the hole served as the ultimate punishment for disobedient inmates. Its cramped cells, infested with vermin, deprived prisoners of light and contact with others, often driving them to madness. Tragically, many inmates confined here met their demise by their own hands. The eerie atmosphere of the hole invokes feelings of nausea, chills, and an overwhelming sense of being watched, accompanied by unsettling sounds of deranged babbling and disembodied moans. The administration wing holds its own share of spectral residents, notably Arthur Glatke, appointed superintendent in 1935. Despite his efforts to improve prison conditions, including combating overcrowding, tragedy struck in 1950 when his wife, Helen, accidentally triggered a gun, resulting in her untimely death. Arthur, grief-stricken, continued his tenure until his passing in 1959, reportedly from a heart attack in his office. Both Arthur and Helen are said to haunt the administration wing, though described as benevolent spirits. The chapel stands as one of the focal points for paranormal activity within Mansfield Prison, 
with reports suggesting it as a hub for haunting phenomena. Its grim history adds to the intrigue, as this area once served as the execution site for prisoners. Visitors often capture strange light anomalies in photographs and report unexplained noises resonating throughout the room. Spirits are frequently glimpsed lingering in doorways, only to vanish upon direct inspection. While rare, some visitors claim to have been physically touched by these spirits. Despite the prominence of these haunted locations, paranormal activity permeates throughout the prison and its grounds. Reports of movement in the graveyard and unsettling experiences in the West Attic further add to the eerie environment. Even before its closure, the cell block was renowned for its hauntings, with inmates recalling encounters with a ghostly lady who would tuck their blankets at night. Indeed, Mansfield Prison hosts a diverse array of spectral inhabitants, ranging from friendly to malevolent entities. Visitors are advised to remain vigilant while exploring every corner of the 250,000 square feet of this iconic prison, uncovering its Hollywood connections, chilling paranormal encounters, and the resilient spirits that linger within its walls. As our exploration of Ohio's most chilling locations comes to a close, we're left with a lingering sense of unease and wonder. But beyond the ghostly encounters and spine-tingling experiences, these places are more than just haunted landmarks. They're windows into Ohio's rich and mysterious history. Whether you're a believer in the supernatural or simply intrigued by the unknown, there's no denying the allure of these haunted hotspots. Until next time, remember to keep an open mind and a watchful eye, because you never know what might be lurking just around the corner. This has been Tyler. Thanks for joining me on this chilling exploration of Ohio's creepiest places. Hit the like and subscribe button and turn on notifications to stay up to date with the latest videos. Bye for now.